we are currently facing a crisis the likes of which we have not experienced in over a century as the coronavirus pandemic spreads across the world. What does this mean for the values that we hold dear? Well, we already know that it's increasing the gap between the rich and the poor, right here and where I live in North America, as well as around the world. So for example, we've already seen here in North America the huge lineups for people waiting to get to food banks just to supply their families. Skyrocketing unemployment rates are hitting the marginalized and the disadvantaged first. And people who already live in places that are polluted are much more vulnerable to the impacts of coronavirus. So for example, we know that in the city of Chicago, where 30% of the population is African American, 60% of the people who have died from the pandemic are African American. We're also seeing that around North America, those hardest hit are the people who live in areas where there's already pollution, poverty, and illnesses that are related to our environment like obesity, disease, cancer, and more. When it comes to climate change, people say, well, isn't there some good news? And there is the good news, if you can call it that, the fact that as our economy has slowed down and shut down, which has thrown people out of work and made many families unable to even put food on the table, we have also seen a drop in air pollutant emissions. In fact, it's estimated that in some of the most polluted areas in China, for example, it could be that the improvement in air quality saved as many or more lives as were lost to the pandemic. Because air pollution is the silent killer. It's responsible for millions of deaths around the world every year. Here in the United States, air pollution, primarily from fossil fuels, kills over 200,000 people per year. Yet that's a number that somehow we don't talk about because it's been with us for so long and we perceive it to just be the cost of using energy. Pollution around the world is estimated, according to one Lancet study, pollution of air, water, and soil put together, to be responsible for one out of every six deaths. So we have seen a drop in air pollution. We have seen blue skies, the likes of which many polluted urban areas haven't seen in decades. We've also seen a drop in carbon emissions. But here's the thing. As the pandemic passes, those emissions will jump right back up again. And it's possible they may even soar higher as people try to make up for lost time and to spend, depending on what priorities the various stimulus packages and governments focus on. Why? Because these reductions were not achieved through sustainable ways. Shutting down the economy, throwing people out of work, making people unable to feed their families, those are not sustainable ways to decrease our carbon emissions and our air pollution. No, we need them to be decreased through sustainable methods. Like what? Through increases in efficiency, not wasting our energy. Through replacing dirty, polluting fossil fuels with sources of clean energy that are fueled by the wind and the sun and the tides and more. By changing the way that we live, so we don't need to travel as much or as far. And by changing what we eat, so we don't have to rely so heavily on the uh, meat, for example, that produces so much of our heat trapping gases as well. The bottom line is this, we face a turning point in our history today. Will we choose to head forward into a new, better and cleaner future? Or will we cling to the past even harder? The pandemic has taught us something that many of us had forgotten, and it's this. No matter where we live, no matter what language we speak, no matter who we are, no matter where we fall on the political spectrum, when it all comes down to it, we all care about the same things. Our health and the safety of our families, our loved ones, our friends, our communities, the places where we live. That's what the pandemic threatens, and that is exactly what climate change threatens too. So what do we need to take with us into this new world? The realization that what unites every single one of us as humans living on this planet is far more than what divides us. Our society is not built to anticipate risks especially risks that haven't happened for a long time or have never happened before. 
And today we face untold risks as nearly 8 billion of us are pushing the boundaries of this planet on which we live. Not only that, but for many of us who live in North America or Australia, our societies are fiercely independent and they prize leadership qualities like strength and courage in adversity, but not the care and the preparation to avoid those risks in advance. But what our grandparents taught us is true. A stitch in time saves nine. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Looking down the road and preparing for the risks that we face is more important today than ever. Today, climate is changing faster than any time in the history of human civilization on our planet. And the way I think of its risks are like this. Where I live in West Texas is so flat that many of our roads are dead straight. They are so straight, in fact, that you could be driving in the road, not only staying on the road, but in your own lane, looking in the rear view mirror of your car. Why? Because where you were five seconds ago, 30 seconds ago, two minutes ago, is a perfect predictor of where you will be in the future. So looking backwards at the past works if the road is straight. But if you're coming up on a curve, you have to take your eyes off the past. You have to look forward into the future or else you won't make it around the curve. Well, today, all of us on this planet are in one giant bus hurtling towards the curve. The curve is climate change. And the reason why we care about it is because our entire civilization is built on the assumption of a stable climate, a straight road. Everything from our food, how and where and when we grow our crops, how we have allocated our water, our energy needs, our infrastructure, our building design, it is all predicated on the assumption of a stable climate. Yet today, climate is changing faster than any time in our history. And that is why more than ever today, it is so important to look down the road, to build resilience to the risks that we can no longer avoid, and even more importantly, to reduce our carbon emissions as soon as possible to avoid the risks that we cannot prepare for or adapt to.